Let me let me throw something at you while you're thinking. Because uh, I, I was down in Florida in my 20s. And I was working at a little health food store in Fort Lauderdale. And at the end of my time there, I decided I was going to do a fast. And so I was living in this tiny little apartment off Las Olas Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. And I started fasting. And I fasted for, it was at least... Ten days, it could have been two weeks, I can't remember the exact amount of time, but by the end of the fast, um, I was having some mold symptoms. Now, I, I didn't know what they were at the time, and since I was fasting and I had assumed, you know, fasting, you're going to do detoxing, it's going to be a healthy experience, and generally that's true. You know, generally whenever I do fasting, there's some detox, uh, not that I've done much lately, but... Um, so there were some benefits, but, but in this particular place I was living, there was obviously mold issues because I started get, having breathing and throat issues near the end of the fast. And I'm wondering if that, uh, those symptoms were not facilitated by not having any nutrition in a sense. You know, I was drinking water, but I basically wasn't having any food, so I wasn't getting any nutrients. So was it a combination of mold there and also not getting all these nutrients that, that you're talking about, which are needed to help the body combat mold, uh, the, the kind of combination of these things. And then, you know, realizing like here, coming down to Florida here, been here for like, I guess, what, since um, late January. So it's like, what, a month and, you know, six, it's going to be like six weeks or so. And having been in this house, which was recently like refinished and cleaned, and it's got mold issues, I'm pretty sure, because now, you know, I started having like breathing issues, you know, like a week or two ago, and they're kind of just staying constant. Although yesterday, after reading that thing on vitamin D, I, I, I haven't been, I've been taking vitamin D now and then, but not regularly, but it's like I took some vitamin D and B12 yesterday, and almost immediately I felt uh, an improvement in the symptoms. Hmm. So, um, so I'm going to up my B12 and vitamin D dosage. Uh, but um, I don't know what I, why I'm sharing this all with you. I just, it's just interesting. I think, um, I mean, maybe it's just I'll have to move to the southwest <laughs> <laughs> where it's dry, you know. But, um, but it's yeah. interesting. Go ahead. Well, as far as location goes, um, we, you know, a lot of people told us we need to move to Arizona because it's dry and mold isn't an issue there. But, you know, mold is, is, is not so much outdoor, it's not so much an outdoor problem. I mean, if we all lived outside, we wouldn't have these dark, wet places inside where, like, it grows inside. I mean, it grows outside, obviously, but, um, you know, if you've got a water leak, and people, like, I just read something like 25% of homes have some kind of water damage. Um, you know, and, like, hotels are a very common place for mold because it's a lot of humidity from a lot of people showering, small place. Yeah. Um, it can't, they can't keep up with dehumidifying all of that. I mean, it's just, from what I read, there's... There's mold problems everywhere. I mean, even in Arizona, there's you can still have mold issues. Um, and what we just, you know, what I kind of started to see on these forums was, you can find a safe place anywhere, but you have to you have to look. Um, and definitely in Florida, there's a lot. I mean, it's very the the air is moldy. Um, you know, hurricanes damage buildings, and so. Pretty much everything is affected by mold a little bit, but yeah, if you're if you haven't been exposed to it long term, you know, like many houses would be okay for other people, but I mean it's still not going to be good for you to be in the mold, but it's not going to cause the severe reaction that I would get right. from being there. I would imagine that very expensive uh, home air conditioning systems filter out mold. Is that would you are you aware of any such thing? There, I mean, we we've heard of different um, like purifiers, very expensive air purifiers that will do that sort of thing and, and make it better for people. Which is, you know, that's definitely something you could do in your house. But um, 
I don't know, some, yes, there are definitely units that will help with that. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, you know what's kind of weird about it is it's like this thing that you can't see that starts destroying your health. It's, it's kind of, it's got a mysterious quality to it. It's like, you know, it's, you're fighting something you can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely, you said um, something about that earlier, and I was like, yes, a lot of people can get health problems from mold and not know it is from mold. You know, like there was um, one, one family that I read about that moved into a, a new house, and, you know, they loved it, but they noticed that their family, all they had like four kids, and all of them started getting health problems. And so, she, and then, you know, the parents, so they would all, like, go to the doctor and try and fix the individual problems. But she was like, why is it that we're all struggling with health problems, you know, and we didn't have them before moving here, but now we're having them. And um, they eventually discovered that it was mold, and they had an expensive remediation pro process done, yeah. which you can do. And, and then it checked out. Their home was fine. Um, so they kept living there for seven more years, and the health problems just continued to get worse. <laughs> and so wow. eventually they had to do what we did, which was leave everything behind, start completely over. Um, and when they did that, things started to get better. And they, um, they, you know, they changed their diet and did all these things to work on healing. Um, but sometimes, you know, if we've had mold, we can think that it's, it's been remediated, right? It's safe. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's very difficult to get rid of mold, very difficult. And, yes, the, the health problems. Um, so, like, one of them got di type 1 diabetes, another one got allergies, you know, things that we could say, oh, there's no reason for it. Or, you know, a lot of people who aren't as health conscious who are just, you know, eating whatever, like I used to eat just whatever. And so I wouldn't have been so tuned into health problems because I probably would have figured, oh, it just I just got, you know, I've just started to develop asthma, you know. But since we've been eating this diet to get as healthy as possible, then um, we're like, this can't, there's some reason why we're not getting healthy. <laughs> we're supposed to be getting, right. improving, not going downhill. So right. I think maybe that helped us to, you know, to look for another cause. And, and some people who, like I've heard the story of this one girl, she lived in mold for like four years, and, you know, she was going to all these doctors trying to find help, and she couldn't find help, and they, they eventually left, and oh my gosh, it's just terrible stories, um, but I do feel like eating this way is um, really giving us a, a good shot at getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh one thing I saw, and maybe you, maybe you're you're familiar with this. Um, it's a common argument in fruit phobic groups, which is that uh, you know fruit has a lot of sugar, and you know candida is a is a fungus, or it could be characterized as a mold, uh, and that uh, candida feeds off of sugar. Uh, and perhaps other molds do as well. So I think one of the things I saw on Mercola's site, I, I don't think he's a great fan of a lot of fruit. Uh, you know, he, he, he was saying that one of the things you have to do is to get your carbohydrate intake way down when you want to clean the mold out of your system. So for folks like us that are, that love carbohydrates, do you think that that makes it more difficult? Uh, what, what's your take on that position? I'm really glad you asked that. That is something that I've looked into because um, a lot of people will say that um, definitely, you know, get that, get rid of that fruit. But, you know, I was reading on one person's site, I can't even remember what his name was, but he said this thing about getting rid of the fruit for candida, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, that's something that I've dealt with this whole time on on the fruit-based diet is people saying – you know, I used to do the candida diet, no sugar, no fruit, no whatever, and it didn't, maybe it was short term, or it, it just didn't work for me, it didn't work for me, and then they ended up getting rid of the fat and eating sugar, and that's what helped them get well. Same thing with diabetes, they're like, don't eat, don't eat fruit, don't eat sugar, I mean, 
processed sugar is different than fruit sugar, <laughs> right. obviously. But they would they said the same thing for me with diabetes. And diabetics are prone to candida. You know, I will get candida symptoms if I my blood sugar stays high for a while um, because of eating a lot of fat. Um, so having this experience and knowing that at least for my experience with candida and diabetes is lower the fat and keep eating sugar. I mean, not sugar, but you keep eating fruit because that's what my body runs on. Um, so I guess it makes me willing to just give it a shot with this because, um, because maybe they're wrong. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, well, well, and also I'm sure, I think, I think you've stated that you feel better when you're eating fruit. Like you, if you eat a lot of carbohydrates or cooked carbs that you don't feel like great. So, I mean, that's, that's another reason. Right? Yeah. I think that, um, you know, there's a, what happens when I eat, um, the heavier stuff is I feel, um, I'm not as sensitive to things. So maybe if I'm very, I'm feeling very, hypersensitive or something, I would think, oh, it would be better if I eat this other food. But then I get other health problems. So for me, my health has been the, you know, I have the best feeling overall eating fruit. And I feel like going back and eating something else because it dampens the symptoms or maybe it slows down the detox so I feel better because my body's trying to deal with all this stuff. Um, but if I'm eating fruit, I'm allowing my body to, to, to heal, to, to detox. It's doing a lot of detoxing. So, um, you know, yeah. this, this detox variable is a tricky one because, uh, you know, I, I have heard cases of like, I think, you know, um, you, you remember 30, there's 30 bananas a day. And then there was this 30 bananas a day sucks, uh, site that evolved, which was basically made up of people who, for for one reason or another, could not make the total raw food thing work. And some of those folks would claim that they were, you know, for, for extended periods of time, having what they thought were detox symptoms, mm -hmm. but that when they finally went back and allowed themselves some freedoms, whether that meant uh, incorporating cooked foods, or perhaps even some of them, I guess, went back to eating animal products, those those so-called detox symptoms went away. Uh, how, how would you speak to that phenomenon? Well, I think that a lot of people um, end up with deficiency symptoms, and they think it's because of the fruit, or they think it's because they, they're, they're not really sure. And so they feel better when they're eating um the animal products or the cooked foods, like for instance, the iodine, iodine. Yeah. Um, when people eat eggs, they'll eat eggs. They feel better because well, something that, well, the chickens are fed iodine to have healthy eggs. Right. So, um, I think that there's more that we can't really see, but, um, that's why I so much want to share about things that I've done to fix my deficiencies and get better eating yeah. this way. Yeah. That we don't have to go back to things that cause other problems. Maybe we can't see them immediately, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, very interesting. <laughs> very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's, um, it's interesting. There's a variety of topics that are difficult. Like, you, you know, there a lot of, and a lot, there's a lot in the news lately about climate change and, Within uh, conservative American circles, there's a reluctance to accept the validity of of the the scientific claim of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, many would say, you know, it's like 98% of scientists say that there is climate change that's related to human uh, industrial activity, or you, you know, human uh, human activity is creating carbon dioxide, which is contributing to climate change. So that, and, and then there's the other one that I'm kind of interested in is AIDS. You know, uh, how AIDS is presented in the media and then the actual facts on the ground. Um, like, for example, why are AIDS cases so prevalent in Africa and so, so low in the United States? 
if the principles behind the definition of AIDS were true, there would have been wild spreading of AIDS in, in a variety of cultures. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have this drastic difference between cultures. Um, now, now, in Africa, there's a lot of sanitation issues um, and other, like, poverty issues. But that, that means that the issues contributing to the spread of AIDS there are sanitation and poverty. They're not this virus. You know, so um, so there's, this is another case of like if you if you question the 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 general line about AIDS, you're 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 castigated as a um, a denier. If you people that criticize climate change are castigated as deniers. People who have mold issues, folks who have never had them, they kind of they'll probably tell you, oh, it's all psychological, right? What are you talking about? You're, you're just doing a bunch of crazy stuff. That's not a real problem. You know, so I, I, what I'm kind of interested in are these issues that are real for some people, and yet there's a broad, broad broadly speaking, there's not a lot of <laughs> agreement. You know, it's like, I mean, to me, I accept this climate change position. I think it is a problem. I think human activity contributes to climate change, and I think we, and I think, Part of the vegan movement, one of the benefits of it is it'll help uh, address that problem, right? Uh, animal animal production contributes more to pollution than than transportation, so it's a huge component of of turning the, the tide in terms of carbon dioxide pollution. But in terms of AIDS, I'm kind of a little contrarian. I think I don't accept the party line, the kind of government push to address AIDS the way the way it is. So I find myself, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, having experienced these issues with mold myself, I totally hear what you're saying and recognize it's a reality. But it's like someone who hasn't had the experience might think it's total nonsense. You know, it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say or asking you to chime in on, but. but well, you sure brought up some things that I'm like, yes, let me talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people do. Yeah, a lot of people said, I think that it's, these symptoms are all in your head. You just had, we went through PTSD because you lost everything, et cetera. Or you're crazy to get rid of everything. Come on, just do a remediation. You'll be fine or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the different traditional doctors that I've gone to have been not so nice about my experience. Um, why are you wearing a mask? You don't need to wear a mask. You know, like, it makes me feel better. <laughs> it gets rid of the headaches and stuff, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, definitely have experienced the, the, the craziness thing, but you know, people, um, mold, people who were in like the hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, um, New York hurricanes, these are people that I'm hearing about that are having the mold problems because of all the water damage. And, yeah. um, so it's, we're probably not going to have hurricane activity go down, <laughs> you know, so there's going to be continuing more people that are encountering things like this. Um, I just watched this very depressing video yesterday about um, vaccinations and how we, at, at least in this country, I don't know about around the world, I know in this in the United States, um, the vaccinations that we've gotten have um, given us viruses. And so we've all, not all, I mean, I got vaccinations so much throughout my life as a diabetic, as a nurse aide, going on mission trips. And um, every time you do this, there's like, there's viruses, animal viruses that you're getting in your body. And I guess a whole bunch of people died, like from the polio virus, a whole bunch of people then got brain cancer down the road and were dying of brain cancer. The people who were, got this polio virus that was proven to cause cancer. Um, yeah, but this is interesting. That's it's very topical because the people who are anti-vaccination are getting a lot of you know negative press, and the government is, is definitely promotes vaccination. Um, I've always been a little skeptical because I'm kind of into the natural thing and doing things as naturally as possible. Um, now there seems to be some indication that in some communities they're having these flare-ups of like is it, is it the measles or something? And people are claiming that this is because there's low vaccination uh, in those in those groups. So I don't know. If, you know, it's, it's hard to know who's right on this. Uh, 
it seems a bit odd to to uh, inject people with viruses. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's always it's always seemed a bit odd. I've always been like the the key to everything is the immune system. So if the immune system is functioning at high level, it will fend off whatever is the problem, including AIDS. They found I've seen some of the primary uh, scientists on this. They say it comes down to immune, the strength of the immune system, which means, which means the issue is not the invading virus. The issue is not the invading virus. The issue is the strength of the immune system from the get-go, which means you must put in place practices, health practices, living style that promotes the immune system such that it's able to fend off viruses. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what this guy was saying um, in this lecture, was that if we've got these viruses in us, they might be dormant, but then brought on by um, things that lower our immune system, like for us, being in toxic environment, being under a lot of stress. Um, if you get antibiotics for something, if you get, like, um, go for some kind of x-ray, you know, things that are breaking down our immune system instead of building it up, then this can activate the virus. So, yes, eating you know, eating foods that are building our immune system and, and, and healthy living. That's, that's another reason why I see, um, I feel like continuing to live a lifestyle I've been living is going to give my immune system a good shot at um, doing, you know, fighting off whatever this is. It's, if it's because of, it's probably complicated. It's probably a, a complication. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of moving parts, variables. But I, what I also like about, you in this is the honesty that, um, you know, I can't just eat fruit and everything becomes a happy paradise. <laughs> you know, it's a little more, there's, there's other variables besides that, right? I mean, that's, that's a nice idea and maybe it even works for one out of a hundred thousand. But, you know, some people that eat fruit still occasionally get a cold. Some people that eat fruit have mold issues like yourself. Uh, it's not, it doesn't solve every problem. Mm -hmm. You know, something actually working through all this mold stuff, um, and you know, how mold attacks the gut. And, um, I'm just learning a lot of other things that I'm like, oh, this is maybe why some people don't thrive on a fruit based diet is because our gut, um, our good gut bacteria that fights off the bad stuff gets depleted over time, you know, if we had an unhealthy lifestyle before or we got like antibiotics that wiped out our good gut flora along with our bad gut flora, then it takes time to build that up. And so if we've already got it depleted over time, it's not going to be perfect um, right away. And I, I was thinking, man, I've probably had a bad gut issues for a while, but it didn't really you can have symptoms of a poor gut without having digestive symptoms. I didn't know that. So now I'm learning this, like even type 1 diabetes, um, like food sensitivities, allergies, this is because the gut's not working right. I mean, there's various parts in there, like low stomach acid um, and uh, – not enough, like having dysbiosis, so more bad bacteria than good bacteria. Yeah, Those are the yeah, two like, big ones that I'm working on right now um, so that my body can absorb the nutrients so I don't get deficiencies. And there's like genetics that play into it. So um, there's reasons why we can fail to thrive because maybe our body's not getting the nutrients from the, the food or, you know, other, other things. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of great points in there. And, you know, something that intrigues me, which I think must be a factor in all this, we always think of atherosclerosis in terms of heart disease or strokes. But really, when you've got atherosclerosis, it's affecting every organ. So, so when, you, when you've got atherosclerosis, the digestive organs are having their blood flow obstructed. They're not getting, they're not getting the oxygen and the nutrients. Now they, uh, you've probably seen these things. They, in Vietnam, you know, the Vietnam War, they, when they examined soldiers' bodies, these kids were 20 years old, they had atherosclerosis. Americans that eat a standard American diet at age 20 have the beginnings of atherosclerosis. So for, for, I mean, I forget how long, how long did you eat standard American diet? So you were 20? Uh, 
Um, I, I know I at least had 15 years of worse, way worse than standard American diet eating. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I don't know how long it takes. There's probably studies, and maybe within a few years that the arteries get cleaned out. But um, that's provided you're doing a vegan diet that is somewhat fat conscious. Because I know um, uh, Dr. Greger has done a great video on vegans getting heart attacks because they've got – they don't have enough essential fatty acids like you've alluded to, and uh, they have too much of the, uh, you know, plant fats. You can have you can have too many plant fats that are um, what are they called? They're not they're not saturated fat, but they're um, it's it's this this bat, this uh, six three omega ratio that gets screwed up. So you can be vegan and have a heart attack if you're if you're not working those principles into your diet. Um, Anyway, we're kind of going all over the place, but uh, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> but I, I, we're probably at the hour mark here. Um, so, but it's really cool because I, you've got such, you've got a lot of experience with this, so it's great to hear your take on it. Um, anyway, anything else you want to add uh, in closing? We can wrap it up there. Don't live in a moldy house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Tasha. <laughs> thank you, Paul. <laughs> and uh, um, I don't know if we'll, we'll include this or not, but tell us how you how did you put together your uh, country music video? <laughs> <laughs> how, how did I how did I do the video editing for it? <laughs> well, you you uh, it was great. It was great. Did you you uh, did you create a you created a music line and then you. Uh, yeah, how did you do it? What did you use to, to make it? Okay, yeah, I took the Garth Brooks song, and then I um, changed my words. That was the first step. And then I found a, a karaoke um, track for it, and it was so low. So I'm like, I found one where it was up a little bit higher. <laughs> um, so then I um, played the song and took a, a camera, and, well, I was just – singing the song a million times in the, in the truck, <laughs> dancing to it, you know, and then, um, yeah, I took all those little clips and, and, and edited them together with <laughs> the music. Oh, I re I did a full recording of it in my house and, um, used that as my, and then just found the, put them all together. <laughs> well, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's fun. <laughs> all right. I won't keep you any longer. Um, say, say hi to Seth for me. <laughs> 